Well, today we have the honor of hosting Vice Admiral David L. Brewer III, a distinguished leader who served our nation in the United States Navy for over 35 years. Beyond his remarkable military career, he's transitioned to become the 46th superintendent of the Los Angeles Unified School District, leaving an undeniable mark on education. Vice Admiral Brewer, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you for inviting me. Well, there's so much to talk about, but the first things first, you're coming all the way from Orlando, Florida to Jacksonville, but your roots started here. Yes, I did. It did. I went to West Louisville Elementary School as a first grader back in 1951. <laughs> Shows my age. That's only 10 years ago, yeah, right? It's only 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so I started that my journey here. My grandparents w lived here. My grandfather, David L. Brewer Sr., and his wife, my grandmother, Zola Brewer, w w lived on West uh, in the west side of Orlando and my father went to Stanton High School as well as his siblings and so in essence I, I have a lot of Jacksonville roots. I have one question for you that I can ask. What is the most impactful thing that you've done within your career in your lifetime that you know will forever be remembered? your living legacy. I think the, the most impactful thing I did you know like I said God works in mysterious ways. You know, you know I read this book called Halftime by Bob Buford and Bob basically said you live your first part of your life fo you focus on success and the second part of your life you focus on what is significant so after I retired from the United States Navy after 35 years commanding ships and groups in a fleet I was called to be superintendent of schools for Los Angeles I didn't volunteer for that job I was drafted <laughs> and one of the things that I realized is that the second half of my life I needed to focus on educating the children of America especially children of color because they're the ones who have the biggest educational deficit. Yeah. That's so powerful. When you look at the youth now we have social media we have Instagram Facebook a lot of people I mean Michelle Obama just mentioned that she's afraid for our future. Are you afraid for our future? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Because let me tell you something. I'll talk about this tomorrow. I lived through, in 1963, I went to Howard University. But in 1962, just before I went to Howard University, Megha Evers, who was the field director for NAACP in, in Jackson, Mississippi, was killed. In 1963, Kennedy was killed. In 1965, Malcolm X was killed. And in 1968, everybody knows that April 4, Martin Luther King Jr. was killed, followed by Robert F. Kennedy. We were in chaos. We were in turmoil. So we lived through probably one of the worst decades in the history of this country, but we survived. We survived. And, it, and not only did we survive, King is now on the, on the mall because his legacy of you know, obviously freedom for all is now perme permeated in th throughout our society. So uh, by having lived through that, I am not overly concerned by all of the rhetoric and all of the craziness that you see going on today. I know that we will persevere. Perfect. That's it. I don't have anything else to say. <laughs> Persevere. I mean, because I, I just think about it. I have a brother. He He's an alpha man. My sister, she just crossed over as a, an, an AKA. And, so, you know, oftentimes I think even, you know, when I was younger, just thinking about the difference, how fast like social media and technology has progressed for the good and for the bad. But how do you embrace it? Well, I embrace it because it's I'm, I'm a technology guy. Okay, in the Navy, I had to be techn technical. And so I embrace technology. I think we need to leverage it. My, my daughter, who is clearly a pro at it because she has her own network, the bottom line is this. You know, you embrace it, but you, you use it as a means to get a message out. You also use it as a means to empower. Now, it's going to be some craziness in it. It's always been craziness in it. But in essence, you have, we have to sort through that, but we have to use it to empower. That's what we do as 100, I'm a part of 100 Black Men of Greater Orlando. We use it to empower our students, okay? You don't run away from it. You basically embrace it and bend it to your will and bend it towards your, towards your goals. Right, they say use it as a tool, right? Yes, you it's have a, a tool. Toolbox, it's a tool. And you just pull it out when needed, necessary. Is there anything else you wanna say or add to the folks out here in Jacksonville who's coming to visit, to hear you? 
to inspire them to come out. I'm just glad to be back <laughs> in Jacksonville, you know, 823 West 17th Street <laughs> is where I, I grew up as a young man, uh, a young boy, I should say. And then, of course, my father and mother moved to, uh, to uh, Orlando, and that's where I finished from the mighty Jones High School. <laughs> my father went to Stanton High School, and so I'm a Blue Devil also. But I, you know, basically, I'm just glad to be back. What is something that you took from Jacksonville and you brought with you when you were the superintendent and even in, in the Navy? Uh, education, education. Uh, my father and his siblings were all educators with the exception of his brother who fought in World War II and, and was, was basically had PTSD for the rest of his life. Education, education has always been at the forefront of everything that, that I've ever experienced. And that's why I'm a part of the 100 Black Men of Greater Orlando. Why? Because we need to continuously educate our children. Education is the key to success, period. All right. All right. Well, thank you again. Thank you so much for joining us on this show. Okay.